Hey guys, welcome to this video in which I'm going to show you how to create custom items like this one. We have a milk and bucket because previ previously what we've created in I think video number three or four in this series is an exploding cow. So basically if I right click the cow, it would explode as long as I'm holding a bucket. Now in this video, I'm going to teach you how to create a custom item stack and give it a special invisible tag and link it to any behavior in Minecraft so that only if I click the cow, the special cow using the special bucket, it'll blow. Are you ready? Let's crack into it. My name is Matej. Hello and welcome to the Minecraft tutorial series. Please make sure you get your Java stuff on point because everything that I'm going to cover has uh, needs java so if you don't don't understand what i'm having on the screen right now i'll head over to the link in the description we have a full java plus minecraft coding course called project orient which is going to teach you all of that and also make sure to have seen the video in this free YouTube tutorial series about commands because I'm just going to be skipping all that knowledge and we're going to be diving right into items in this video. So this is the command structure. Again, please refer back to the command video on how to create these commands. I just copy paste a command that we, that we already had and also make sure to register it in your own enable main plugin class and then also make sure to register it in the plugin YAML, which is something that I did right here. Custom item is the command. Okay, so you have that uh, and now you're ready to proceed with the video. Also, I have created a new class called keys in which I've simply created one new constant that means public static final field named custom underscore diamond. Remember, when we're making constants, it is recommended to give them an uppercase, um, uppercase naming and then split spaces with underscores. And then the way you create these keys is you simply call new namespaced key and then it needs plugin instance. So we can just call get instance, which I think I've made in one of the earlier videos. If you don't have that, just go right here and you can pause the video and implement this method. And then I simply gave it a nice name, custom diamond. The reason for this key is that when I right click a cow, I'm just going to be painting on the screen. Then we're going to basically give the cow a key. And then when I click the bucket, okay, this bucket also has a key number two, for example, we're going to make sure that this cow is clicked by this bucket holding this invisible key, and then uh, we can create the explosion, right? Because in, in I think the video number three or something, I simply created a uh, cow using, where is that cow command using metadata. The problem with metadata is when I type reload, confirm, they are deleted from the entity. So in this video, I'm going to teach you something called permanent metadata. So you need to have custom keys to identify that. So one is for the, the diamond and the other one is for the cow. I can simply go inside the cow command right here and I can delete this metadata. And I can replace it with get persistent data container to open up the persistent metadata, metadata and then set the key to keys custom cow and then the it needs a persistent data type which simply stands for wh whichever data type you want to put there in java right we have a bunch so i'm just going to go with i'm just going to go with boolean and then the value of the boolean is just true these two don't really matter in our case because we just want to know if the cow has the custom key right i can delete that and i'm just going to skip through to right into creating the custom item because this video is about custom items and we've been speaking for four minutes already without creating one and then we're going to finish the rest of the code so the way we're going to create a custom item is we're going to go into item stack item and then let me just say custom bucket and did i really call it a custom diamond yes i did okay i have to uh, fix this because I don't know what I was thinking. Custom bucket. There we go. So custom bucket right here. And then you simply create a new item stack and this can take in either material or another item stack or an amount, even damage and data. We're not really using the data anymore in Minecraft. Uh, the damage only works for items that can be damaged, such as these tools right here or armor, right? I know that some people use also damage for custom models. Um, I'm not going to be covering that in this video. So in this video, we're going to keep it very simple. I'm simply going to use the material bucket. Then what you need to do, 
you need to get the item meta. Now, if you call this, it's going to actually produce a copy of the item meta. Item meta is a subclass, it's a class um, connected with the actual item stack holding custom properties, such as the name, the enchantments and stuff like that. And then when you're done, you have to actually set the item beta, meta back to the custom item. So always make sure to do that. Otherwise, these changes will not be uh, stored. And now we can set the display name and we can also use the custom colors such as, I don't know, gold right here, just like that. The display name is what you've seen here. It says milk in the bucket, right? And then I can set, set lore even. Right click to spawn a cow. No, right click to milk a cow. And you can even have multi-line lore, right? Just like that, just create a arrays list using arrays as list, and then simply put whatever you want there. This is simply displayed right here. It says right click, right click me on a cow. Right click me on a cow. Okay, this can be gray. I leave the color up to you. What I also recommend, what is really cool, is adding item flags. No, not the metadata. Wait, wait, not yet, not yet. So add item flags right here. And then you can hide uh, different attributes of the item. I'm going to show you how to make this item glow. So I want to hide enchants. And then we're going to be adding a new enchantment. And the enchantment doesn't have really matter right here. And you can put a true there, ignore level restriction, because the, the enchantment will be applied regardless of which item you want to apply to. It doesn't really matter, because we're going to hide the fact that this is an enchanted item. And this is simply for decoration to make the item glow. Okay, so we can do that. And then also, similarly to what we had in the cow command, the persistent data container, well, turns out that even meta metadata support supports this one. So I can simply copy and paste this. And instead of having custom cow, I have a custom bucket. There we go. Awesome. That's it. Now, if I go into the game, if I reload and I type the command, I should be received. I should receive the item. And of course, I did not receive the item because I forgot to call player that get inventory add item custom bucket. There we go. And now if I go into the game and I type in slash custom item, I am given a very custom bucket. It says it says custom bucket, and then it has a space. This is the space that we have right here. And then it has the lore on it, and it also glows very nicely. If you do want to, if you do want to, you can also use uh, chat color dot bold to make it bolder. However, here you have to add an empty string because you can't uh, connect different chat colors together in Java. Unfortunately, that's just the limit. So you got to make sure to, to split them with it with an empty string like that. Great. Now let's finish off this section by going into entity listener. And here we have the logic for exploding our cows, right? So we have that the type has to be a cow or whichever, whichever mob we have uh, placed in the settings. This needs to be gone it has metadata because this will not work for entities uh, after restart or reload. So we have persistent data container right here, entity container, and we can get it. And now we can simply check it. If it has the keys dot custom cow, there we go. And I can also just copy this to get the player get item in hand, get item meta, get persistent data container. And forgive me if this will produce issues if I'm right clicking uh, using just having air, right? In, in this case, you simply can create a null check like this. And sometimes the item meta is null, right? So you can, in this case, we can simply create a null check. Yeah, maybe I can create it together with you guys. I do not want to receive comments that it doesn't work because I know it does. Yeah, so this one, okay, it's always, okay, so that is not null. Okay, great. So we can just get rid of this, this one and we can simply check for the item meta. Great. All right, even better. So entity command container is done, player container uh, almost done. We have to get rid of this type logic and simply check if the player, if the player container or say the player, the hand item container has that. And if the code is getting too big, I'm just going to split it just like this one to make it more readable. Is it more readable? Okay. 
Now it's more readable. Great. Let me restart and let me check the game. Ladies and gentlemen, if I go and I right click a cow, it doesn't do anything because this one is not our special cow. We have to actually go and find this cow. Hello, you're about to get blown. And if I right click using the custom bucket, boom, it blows. And this even works after I do reload, confirm. There we go. And the cow still blows because this metadata is actually written on the disk. Awesome, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've learned how to create custom items and how to use persistent metadata storage, uh, not metadata, just persistent data container, actually, to link things together in Minecraft in your custom plugin. Now you can create high quality plugins like Hypixel. Just kidding. And if you actually want to create high quality plugins like Hypixel, go and check the class called the Project Orion, which is a full seven week online course just for Java and Minecraft plugins. We have a 2000 member community on there. And the best of all, I'm on there twice per week on live Q&A calls, which you can hop on, you can unmute yourself, you can actually share your, your code so I can review it. And together we can unblock you, we can fix all the issues that you have, and we can help you create amazing, amazing plugins. So go check that link in the description. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe to this channel if you enjoy, if you want to see more videos like that, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.